We're tickled pink that you're taking a look at this video which introduces you to Title Punch, the new effects set from Useful Effects and Effects Factory. Now usually when we think of effects, we think of something that works on a full screen clip. So for example, if I put on something from our nostalgia set, we're getting something that works across that entire image. But the Title Punch set is designed specifically to work with anything that has an alpha channel. And titles that come with Final Cut are really ideal candidates for working with them. So for example, I'm going to take Assembler, which comes with Final Cut. I'll just put it on my timeline. I'm going to copy the original title, which has the stage effect already applied. And that's what we were looking at when we started the video. I then go over to Assembler, go to the Edit menu, Paste Effects. And you can see that now Assembler looks absolutely fabulous. So it has that same effect, taking advantage of the alpha channel. We're getting all this really nice flaring coming out of it. Now, it doesn't have to be a title. It can be anything that has an alpha channel. So for example, this is an imported PNG image. If I look at the view menu, go down to the alpha channel, I turn that on, I see that we have that transparency information. I'm gonna go back to the color, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna paste in the effects, and again, it just looks fabulous. In this case, I have a JPEG image, and if I look at the view menu, I see that obviously because it's a JPEG, we don't have alpha information in there. So we would think, well, this isn't going to work but you can quite often get something interesting just by using a key around this. So here I've copied in the stage effect and obviously it's not really getting the effect what we wanted. But that's okay, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna to go to the effects tab, going down to the keyer menu, apply the standard luma keyer and put it on there and we're still a little bit disappointed. This is because what's happening is stage is applied to the JPEG but because there's no alpha information, it can't do anything. Then we pull the Luma key, and again, it's like, Bleh. we're getting things that aren't very good here. So this is the wrong order of events. What we need to do is just put the Luma key up at the top, and now we see that it looks fabulous. Because it has this Luma key, you can use any of the effects on here. So for example, I'll go back to the title punch set, and we'll put on screened and it looks like it's supposed to look. So that looks great. Now, let's stop and let's go to a clip now. And again, we'll put on the screened effect and we see that doesn't really look good. We'll go to the keen menu. We'll go to Luma key. And again, I will just scrunch that up, reorder these. And now I'm getting something interesting. I'm gonna open up the screen menu, change the glow color, make that red to match. And this is something that is very compelling. So using this Luma here can often get you around the problem of not having the alpha information or not having it be a title. But let's take a look at another example. In this case, I'm going to go to the title punch set again. I've removed that screen effect. And in this case, I'm going to apply the shadow effect. So shadow, just dragging it over. I already know that the Luma key is pulling that alpha channel on there and then the shadow is applied. So if I got rid of the Luma key, this is what it would look like. It would look just pure black, which makes sense because the alpha channel is solid black. I turn on the Luma key again and I get something, but it doesn't quite look right, does it? So what I'm going to do is just invert that Luma key and there it looks like this neat sort of projection that's coming through here. The shadow effect, like many of the effects, has a large range of parameters. So we can push that up, maybe drop the blur down a little bit and we get this cool projection thing going on. So even though you might not be working with a title, you can still try to get something interesting. Now some of them, you don't actually need the Luma key on there at all. They just have something that's interesting. It's just nothing that we had sort of intended. So for example, I'm gonna take this clip. I've gotten rid of the Luma key. I've gotten rid of the other effects. And for example, if I put smudged on here, it has this kind of neat look to it, right? Uh, letters also looks pretty good. So let's take a look at letters. We'll get rid of smudged. So we're getting these really neat grungy effects that are going on with the title punch, even though there's no alpha channel. So some of them will still look great. It's just not exactly what we'd intended them to look like. <laughs> if you want to know what we intended them to look like, we're going to go back to this one. Let's put the letters on there. And you see this is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I can, for example, change the background look and it'll change that background texture. And you can also, of course, drop in your own image if you wanted to. Now, there will arise situations where you're using a title and it's still not really working. 
And unfortunately, that's beyond our control, but I want to show you what that looks like and you'll understand why that problem is occurring. So in this case, I've created two dummy titles. They're just normal titles, there's nothing fancy to them, and I put them over clips. Just to show you what the title is, it's just super basic. And there are two different titles in that one of them has a title background object, which is a specific thing that's created inside of Motion when you create a title. The first one does not have it, and the second one does. So to show you the problem, I'm gonna select these two clips. I'm gonna click on the splotched and apply those to both of those clips. Now this looks exactly what it's supposed to look like. And if I take this background look and move it around, I see that I'm pulling in the text, I'm getting this great interaction with the background, and it looks exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Change the range, change the spread, right? So this is the effect that I'm looking for. And this is because this title has no background object. And there's no, unfortunately, inside of Final Cut, there's no way to verify. When you see the problem, you'll recognize it. And this is what the problem looks like. It looks kind of cool, but it doesn't quite look right. It doesn't, you see all this sort of blotchiness going on uh, here specifically. And so if you're seeing this and you think, you know what, that's, I bet that's one of those titles that has that background object. So if it's one of yours, we encourage you to rebuild the title without the background or else use it without that clip behind it and you'll have a much better result. So in this case, if I disable the clip, now that background clip is no longer visible and this is how another solution for how you could use it in this situation. So we hope this will let you get a nice introduction to the title punch set from useful effects and we're really looking forward to what you guys are going to be building with it.